Welcome to the Spiritual Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Mary Beth, and today we have a special guest. You are just going to love him. His name is Victor Peruta. How are you doing today, Victor? Hey, Mary Beth. I'm doing great. How are you? So good. I am going to read your bio to everybody, but I wanted to say hello to you first. And also remind the viewers, go ahead and hit subscribe and like this episode right now so you don't forget. And you're going to get to see spiritual teachers and healers every single week, psychics, people who can channel. This is all about spiritual transformation. So please go ahead and join our community so we can spiritually transform together. Okay, guys, so here is Victor's short bio. Victor was voted Cincinnati's best psychic by Cincinnati Magazine for his mysteriously accurate and compelling readings. He is founder of the Victory of Light Expo, one of the Midwest's largest body, mind, and spirit expos. Victor was featured on ABC's The View and The List as an expert on ghosts and hauntings. And on two episodes of Beyond Belief with Coast to Coast AM, AM's George Nuri. Nuri? Did I say that right? George Nuri. Yep, that's on, right. On Gaia TV, currently streaming on Amazon Prime, Victor has appeared on all of Cincinnati's major TV and radio stations and in newspapers and magazines. Victor is available for readings and mediumship for individuals, couples, small and large groups, parties, and events. And so, Victor, we're talking about um, radio stations and stuff. That is the first time that I ever heard you was on the morning show, the Q102 morning show, back in my early 20s. And I'm, for <laughs> I'm 49 now, so we've known each other for quite a while. That's right. I remember you from back then, and those were fun days. Oh, my God. Well, what, yeah, that was the radio. You were on the morning show. They had you on as a regular because you were so badass. And then you also were at this thing that we have in Cincinnati called Party at the Park, where, you know, I was just saying before we hit record, oh, yeah, I was a little bit of a lush back then. And um, <laughs> I don't drink alcohol anymore, but back then I definitely indulged. So I remember coming up to you and you would take people's hand and just do short little readings, like kind of walk around, you know, and yes. um, you gave me some very accurate, accurate, everything happened. And I could say like over time, it's been time tested. For instance, you told me that I was gonna have one boy and maybe a second boy. And I thought, that's weird. I, I mean, I know I'm gonna have a girl because I always felt like I was gonna have a girl. Well, guess what? I have one boy and I had a stepson. So that was kind of probably what you were, you said. Oh, there we go, so it came true. Yeah, I got other stories too. But first, um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your 33 year career as a psychic. Yeah. And then I'll tell some more stories of your accuracy because I've had so many experiences with you over the decades that I, that's why I was so excited to have you on here. Um, so let's go a little bit, um, get into uh, your paranormal work. First of all, like, tell me a little bit of it, maybe whatever you want to start. Paranormal work. Oh, yeah. So uh, as a psychic, when I uh, started uh, coming out as a professional psychic and offering myself for readings and different services and things that people needed help with, I'd occasionally get a uh, phone call about a ghost or disturbance in someone's house. And so I'd go and investigate. And a lot of times it would just be somebody that used to live in the house, just a uh, uh, a, a dead person that didn't really know quite how to get to heaven or needed a little help or guidance. And uh, so that was part of my work as a psychic, as a professional psychic. But then I uh, uh, got a phone call from a psychic friend of mine who'd signed up to have a booth to do readings at Scarefest which is a big paranormal convention. It was in Lexington. So they would have all the horror movie uh, stars and uh, you know paranormal investigators. And somebody from one of the paranormal teams came up and introduced themselves. He'd been to Victory of Light Expo. He'd seen my Ask a Psychic presentation. And I remembered him being there sitting in the front row. And um, we started talking about paranormal investigating. And he invited me to start investigating with his group. And that was one of the best things I'd ever done for my career because the whole paranormal world really expanded for me. And I started doing investigations, teaching about paranormal investigating, teaching about the spirit world, uh, dead people, angels, you know, shadow people, all the various entities and energies that you feel in that 
realm of life. And uh, then also I know how to clear those energies as well. And uh, I've got a technique that I've been using for a long time and it really works well. And uh, the paranormal team and I used to do these investigations and some of the places were so incredibly haunted, but uh, we were able to clear uh, a lot of a lot of the spirits that were bothering these families, and these families were almost ready to move out of their homes. So we were able to kind of clear the space, and and it's it's something that is really really fascinating for me to do paranormal investigations and paranormal work because it really helps you understand the history of a location, and it helps you put together all the the folk tales into an actual factual story and you're getting the real information from the spirits there so uh, doing a lot of that work and interacting with uh, dead people in that way i came to understand uh the, that dimension of life and it got to the point where i'd be sitting down having a conversation with the dead person almost in the way that i'd be having a conversation with a living person they'd be telling me about their lives why they're still there at that location things that happened to them so it adds a lot of depth and richness to my experience of life that is awesome and i do remember reaching out to you i don't know if you remember this this was a long time ago my son was only five and he's about to turn 21 and i lived in a haunted place that i was renting so i didn't officially own it but i had had a lot of i have a lot of friends who were mediums and psychics um seemed to like attract them like maggots Mag <laughs> not maggots oh my like gosh magnets. magnets that's <laughs> awful um i just got a visual of that poltergeist movie with the maggots coming out of this oh my god yeah Remember that movie okay so that's probably what happened to me i should have never watched that but anyway um this house was so haunted and they were like there's a energy vortex and a negative like a lot, some, a lot of it's negative there was a lot of positive we had a lot of protection they all said the same thing and there was kind of negative things happening with the dog he was like so petrified he wouldn't come out of he went from being the sweetest i mean he was still sweet but the you know happiest joyful dog you could imagine to not leaving the certain room he's throwing up blood like he was it was scary oh my god so yeah, he it was got, got, it got, or something. It got, yeah they said that one of these negative energies was intentionally messing with the dog and my son was acting weird he'd be like turn on ghost hunters or whatever those you know those ghosts he it was like i'm like who are you you're five it, it was like he was being um he was channeling something and i could tell it was but i called you and i said victor there's i'm in this place and i, I said there's a negative energy vortex i don't think and like there from what i heard like we woke it up because i'm so open and then mm -hmm. between me and my son and the animals, it just kind of like we woke it up. There was electric, there was stuff like I saw stuff all the time. And you said that's it. You know, you said you could clear it like or or not clear it as much as seal the vortex. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought about it and then I thought, you know what, I'm just going to move <laughs> <laughs> because the dog was suffering so much. And yeah. I, I felt like I was going to have PTSD as long as I lived Sometimes there. Sometimes that is the best choice because some places can't be cleared. But it you know, constant. Kids, kids and dogs can see these things because yes. you know, they're more wide open than a, and that adults tend to be. Uh, and of course, uh, dogs have this incredible sense of smell and uh, they will often follow things around the room. You know, they'll, they'll be able to see orbs and ghosts and spirit or bark into a corner and there's no one there. Uh, cats too. I mean, um, it's, it's a part of life. I mean, every yeah. culture has a tradition of, um, uh, non-human entities as well as ghosts and spirits it was so much like the poltergeist movie they said you know it's where that you built the, it's where the house was built and when you brought up cats so my 16 year old cat that just passed away in september we got we had him and unlike the dog he was just it was like he's watching a light show all the time and he mm -hmm. was not scared at all he was just meowing at things and like he didn't do that right. when we moved but he was not he was fearless the, the dog was scared shitless though but at the end of the day, we did decide just to move. And but yeah, that would have been interesting to see if we could. But my son was acting a little disturbed, too. So we got out of there. Um, yeah, it's one of the signs of spirit attachments or spirit influence when somebody has a, a personality change or 
uh, the relationship changes, uh, they act different. Uh, it's, it's really so common, but people don't really realize it. And if you are possessed or if there's an entity attached to you, a lot of times you're you're not going to know for sure because it's very subtle and people will tend to think they're they're imagining things even if they're perceiving something that's actually psychic or paranormal they they will tend to say oh i was just imagining that or it was just a dream or you know maybe it was something i ate you know but yeah. so they tend to make excuses for it but these things are real and we can feel them in our physical bodies mary beth i mean you know your your physical body is almost uh, you know it's basically a, a psychic antenna or a perceptual antenna and a lot of the language we use involves the physical body when it comes to intuition or psychic things for example you've heard people say well something doesn't smell right about this situation you know and that's your intuition kind of kicking in where a lot of times you'll get you know your the the hairs on your arms or on the back of your neck will stand up when you're encountering paranormal energy or you know some kind of an energy like that or you'll meet somebody and you'll have this sinking feeling in your heart or it'll feel like your stomach dropped so you know all those sensations that you feel you should be paying attention to that stuff because that's your intuition providing you with information because the mind psychologically the mind uh, in our culture we tend to give our our minds priority it's, it's kind of logic and how you think but the minds can also be the mind can also be it can rationalize it can be in denial it could make things up it could be influenced by fear so the thinking isn't as reliable as those first impression intuitive feelings that you get when you meet somebody or enter a new house or a new space or enter a new job or any situation you know your your body's reacting if you pay attention you're on your way to becoming a psychic yeah and i think yeah we all have those abilities and the longer i stayed in that house the more they i opened up i was able to start to see orbs with my naked eye and prior to that we would see them every because Okay, at first it was fun. I'm not gonna lie. We had a lot of fun yeah. at first, but then it, then it got scary. You know, it, I would always like, oh, it'd be fun to live in a haunted house. But then when you have a kid and a dog that are being disturbed, and me mm -hmm. too, I hardly slept. I hardly slept. <laughs> so um, we're taking these pictures, and every time my son could command it, he would say, "I want to see," because we had layers of angels protecting mm -hmm. us. And he would take pictures of the ceiling and say, "I want to see thirteen angels, thirteen." I want to see 34, 34, no matter what number he said, like he commanded it. It was so beautiful. That was the beautiful part of it. We did have a lot of angelic protection going yeah, on. Yeah, so he, he was having a kind of a, a, he had a fun at first. Yeah. An interaction. That's, that's really cool. Yeah, they didn't do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> when I, I, I they didn't do it this the, every time every time he said a number yeah they were playing with him and it was pretty cool I was happy that yeah he was pretty into it I don't think he remembers cool. a lot of it and I'm kind of glad he doesn't to be honest because yeah you know. he's just a little kid right right and that's why we wanted to move to is because like he was too young to mm -hmm. distinguish to discern is this my thought or the thoughts that are I'm are influencing me you know, yeah, what I mean? and, you know what? Well, what you just said is really almost like a fundamental concept in being psychic. I mean, if you're familiar with your own regular thoughts that you tend to have, and then when you start having thoughts that you don't normally have, that means that you're receiving thoughts from someone else, or someone is trying to contact you. You know, so that's 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 very important right there. Yeah, yeah. And it was something that I couldn't teach him at five years old, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, it sounds like he already knew what he was doing. Right. So you mentioned shadow people earlier. Can I ask you what, what are shadow people? Okay, shadow people are non-human entities that uh, some people experience uh, while here on Earth. I've interacted with them. Uh, what's really interesting is when they're around, like there's, uh, I remember investigating a house and I, I talked to some of the neighbors and they had seen these shadow people. And what they are is they're kind of shaped like a human being, you know, so they've got a head and arms and legs, uh, but they move in, in a very different kind of way. And usually they appear as, as shadows, you know, as dark, darker than the surrounding darkness. 
And a lot of times they'll appear uh, in different sizes. Some of them will be short, some will be tall. Sometimes they're wearing a hat. Sometimes they're wearing a cape or some kind of almost like a trench coat or a robe. And they move in a very fast way. But they're not human because they don't really have emotions the way that humans have emotions. They're completely cerebral and analytic. And I think the reason they're around is because, and this is just based on my own um, uh, experiences with them, they seem to be extremely fascinated by the whole concept of love as, as, as in one human loving another human. Uh, they don't seem to uh, have that concept. So they're intrigued by it. And so that that love energy, when they see that around somebody, or when they feel that they're intrigued and they're curious about it. Uh, but these are non-human entities, and I think they might be learning from us, but mm -hmm. other people believe that they can be very harmful. And so, I have, go ahead, sorry. I have encountered a situation where uh, a young man was having Oh, uh, uh, typical emotional problems, depression, lack of focus, lack of uh, uh, being inspired, you know, just didn't want to do anything. And I did see that he did have uh, three shadow people that were attached to him. They were kind of a spirit attachment. It's not really like a possession where they take over your personality, but they, they're around you, they might be attached to you, and they're affecting you or influencing you. So you could have an attachment that's human, like a dead person, mm -hmm. uh, or a non-human. And it could create or help create uh, depression, confusion, lack of focus, uh, uh, those sorts of qualities and characteristics. So, uh, and those are things that a psychologist may not be able to help you with, you know? So you need to get some help from somebody who's quite familiar with paranormal work and clearing spirits or energies away. And that can be done uh, if you know how to do it. It's, 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 it's basically you're building up a vortex of positive energy and you're calling in your higher guides such as angels or your spirit guides or, uh, you know, I even call in the psychic police. I believe there's a psychic police force on the other side who can help you clear spirits or clear negative energy. And then once you feel these higher beings coming into the situation, basically you turn over the situation to those beings and they do the clearing for you, you know? So basically as a paranormal um, investigator and somebody who does clearings, you partner up with your spiritual team and you work with them to clear negative energies uh, from places. We did an investigation in Xenia, which is, you know, farm country. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were two homes uh, side by side and uh, one family lived in both of those homes. Uh, one of the kids moved into the house next door, essentially. And uh, this little girl, they had a, a two-year-old uh, daughter, the, uh, the, uh, the granddaughter to the parents. And she started talking about her black mama. And, and I said, well, my goodness, what's going on? She's got uh, a, a friend, an invisible friend who she's calling her black mom. And so I looked across the street, I noticed a cemetery across the street. And I said, I think some of her ghost friends are coming from that cemetery. And they told me that that cemetery was a black cemetery where the black people were buried. And recently it had been disturbed by a tornado, which, which wow. came and ripped through the cemetery and overturned a lot of those stones. So apparently it kind of uh, brought the dead back to life in a way. And they just wandered across the street and started interacting with that little girl. And that friendship, I think, you know, more of them came and uh, it, it, it just became a paranormal mess. Uh, but I was able to kind of clear that, and they were so thankful. They they were ready to move, and uh, and uh, historically, it was just so interesting that that black cemetery was right across the street. 
Wow, that is that it was is, disturbed, and that's what caused the problems. That is cool. Okay, so here's my co-host who usually joins. This is TJ. Hey, um, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I feel like back to the shadow people. I feel like in my bedroom at night, every now and then, like I catch something moving, like in the corner of my eye. Like I, not when I look directly, it goes away, but I can kind of see with my peripheral vision. Is that? Could that be that? Is it shadowy and dark? Shadowy, like yeah, it looks it more be, like a yeah. shadow than like anything concrete, but like yeah. it moves really quickly. And then I go look and it goes away. That's that's exactly what shadow people are like. They move quickly. They don't kind of move the way we move. They move faster and it's kind of real fast and kind of choppy. And a lot of times kids will, this is it sounds like a horror movie, but they'll see them coming in and out of the closet in their mm. bedroom. Mm -mm. And, uh, and, and, uh, you know, I think there's something to the story of, you know, the ghost in the closet or the spook in the closet there. It's, it's, um, and a lot of times these shadow people will be wearing a hat and sometimes they'll have red glowing eyes. So oh, hell you no. can mm -mm. actually see them. <laughs> you don't want them around, but it's no. really hard to work with them because they're, they've got their own agenda. You know, one thing we need to remember, Mary Beth, is, uh, it's not just humans here on this earth. I mean, we we share this uh, earth with so many other entities, both yes. physical, but also semi-physical. And so in my experience, all that Irish Celtic folklore about fairies and elves and changelings and, you know, fairy circles, all of that really is somewhat true. We do mm -hmm. share this world with other life forms uh and shadow people are apparently one of those um there there's also um an entity called earth elementals you know i know we're kind of going paranormal here we probably want to get back to the psychic a little it bit doesn't later, matter but, this but is the, cool earth too. Ele the earth elementals live in the earth and they're semi-physical so they could live in in rocks or uh, or or in the earth and a lot of times if there is a earth disturbance, for example, there's a, a large excavation project or they're they're putting in a road or uh, it, it can disturb these entities. And I've had clients who have showed me footprints in their carpeting and it it's non-human footprints. They would have like three or four toes and they look kind of like gargoyles. And oh. so there, uh, when you're at a psychic fair and you're at a crystal booth, sometimes I'll notice them under the table or around certain stones or crystals. Now, they don't, they don't have anything to do with us, really. Their job in the scheme of things uh, is to simply, when we die, they will take the elements of our physical bodies and return them back to the earth, as in ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That's their job. Oh, cool. So they're 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 kind of tending to the mineral kingdom, and they help uh, process uh, dying animals, dying people. You know, back into the elements and that go back into the earth. They're not really even interested in us. But I've done a lot of paranormal investigating where I've seen them in basements, and they look just like gargoyles, all different sizes, all different shapes. But again, they're not harmful, but you'll see them just like the gargoyles on the medieval churches. They look de demonic, but they are not demonic. And then, of course, talking about demons, uh, there are demonic entities in the, on this earth as well. And they've been here longer than we have. I mean, they're semi-physical. They can appear as different sizes. Sometimes they're just little. And uh, they they do little things like they'll 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 take things they'll 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 just take money or, or rings or jewelry uh, and sometimes bad smells are associated with them but they can mess with our minds they're really good at creating illusions so that we're saying something that isn't really there or they're messing with our minds in some way and and that's just what they do it's just like. An animal that you'd see, like a squirrel, you know, these entities live here too. You know, so there are all kinds of entities in this world. And that's only like more of the earth-based entities, but uh, I, I, there are also celestial beings, like, you know, like archangels, all the various angels. 
uh, all the dead people, all our loved ones in the spirit world, our spirit guides, our spirit helpers, our spirit healers. Uh, there are doctors in the spirit world that can help you know heal us. Uh, that 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 come through and work with. Uh, spiritual healers when they're uh, working to heal somebody. So uh, the world for me, uh, since I've uh, been working with psychic and metaphysical uh, concepts has become a lot more interesting. And I feel like my own psychic abilities, uh, which we all have, I mean, everybody's psychic. It's just like some of us get uh, get the practice that makes us better. Like some, if you're focusing on being a good musician you're going to be practicing every single day so if you're in a situation like me where that's what i do for a living i get a lot of practice so you know my skill set has evolved but all of us have the equipment we've all got a third eye we all have intuitive sensations in our physical bodies and of course all the five physical senses when they move into silence or into the psychic realm of things you're still seeing, but you're not seeing with your eyes. You're seeing more with your mind or you're hearing, but not just with your ears. It's more like you're hearing in your mind. You might get a word or you might, uh, ghosts often seem to know your name. So, you know, I uh, had a paranormal investigation. It was one of my earliest ones, but it was the one that got me on the view when I was um, flown to New York City to be on the view. Uh, I investigated a house in Louisville and uh, the lady that lived in that house was a real do-gooder. Like she saved animals and she was always wanting to help people. So, you know, the spirits became attracted to her. But a ghost followed me home. And for three nights, this ghost was walking on my rooftop. I could hear the footstep. <laughs> The ghost was calling my name. It knew my name. And I was just thinking, God, I hope this thing goes away. I'm not getting any sleep. Luckily, on the third day, it left on its own. And um, and I got some some peace. But, you know, they they know your name. They yeah. uh, Ghosts will know your name. So often when there's a ghost around, you'll hear someone calling your name. That might be a, a sign of a haunting. Right. Yeah. I'm, a couple things. When you talked about um the demons and the uh what were the goblin things called um i call them earth or gargoyle elementals. earth elementals yeah they look like gargoyles i think that's the origin of the gargoyle okay well so yeah. like like the first thing i'm, I'm like feeling my viewers are going to want to know so we've got these things they accept it how do we protect ourselves from um like let's say that we have just in general since they are everywhere and we're all susceptible because I think that even the dark stuff you know is attracted to light it doesn't mm -hmm. mean oh just because I'm a, a light worker or like people like it doesn't mean you're going to probably be more attracted to these entities energy well that yeah that can be true like if you if you're if you have a psychic aura if you're a psychic medium uh dead people will be attracted to you because they know that that will be their means of communicating with their their living people you know uh, so, uh, but sometimes it can be very overwhelming for some mediums. So they need to learn how to control all the spirits that are coming to them uh, to get help. Uh, but really anything that keeps you healthy and feeling good is going to protect you from spirits. So uh, I never do paranormal investigating uh, when I'm sick or when I'm tired, because, you know, uh, you need to have a vibrant, healthy aura because a healthy aura is like a, a big balloon that surrounds you and negative energy will just bounce right off. It won't be able to get in. But you, when you're in an extremely haunted house and the entities are trying to get in and you're tired, you may not have the energy of the yeah. vitality to, to, to repel them. And sometimes you can actually feel them trying to come into your head. I mean, it's like they're trying to get in and uh, some dead people after they die they have no idea they're dead uh, to them they experience it as being in a dark fog so they're essentially in a state of panic wondering what's going on where they are uh, and and they're afraid of anything like if i try to help them you know they'll they'll just be scared and they'll just hide but then later on uh, an angel or a spirit guide will come through to them and guide them home 
and then they're no longer panicky and uh, everything's uh, just fine. So you've got to be a healthy person. You've got to exercise. You've got to eat right. You've got to sleep. You've got to have positive energy, a positive outlook. Raise your vibration. Raise your vibration your as vibration. high as possible because you it, don't want to be a vibrational match to these lower energies. Exactly. That is that is it. And so if you're healthy, you'll be fine. They will not interfere. Uh, now, uh, of course, uh, there are a lot of dead people in bars yes. who used to be alcoholics, and they are getting off on the vibration of people being drunk you know so mm -hmm. they're hanging out at bars feeling that alcohol sensation from the living people there but you know uh alcohol it's called spirits for a reason I'm glad because you brought this up <laughs> because sometimes people can become dead drunk where they don't remember anything that happened or anything that they did and sometimes during that time of unconsciousness they are taken over by negative entities who can completely destroy their lives to be clear you're talking about the blackout phase Yes. Yeah. When you're blacked out. Yeah. Yeah. And like out, that's happened to me. And people are like, oh, you were talking and walking. And I don't remember a thing. And I kind of think they can take over and or at least influence, not a possession, but yeah. An influence. Yeah. They, they can definitely in, influence. And a lot of people uh, black out, not a lot of people, but, but you see this. They'll, they'll black out and then they'll do something absolutely heinous, like they'll kill somebody or cause a, a major car accident where there's there's a death and they weren't even there. I mean, they really weren't in their bodies. And then they wake up to all this mayhem, you know? So it's really, really important for you to be in your body, you know, to be inhabiting your body, uh, being mindful and present in the now moment, no matter what you're doing. I mean, if you're right. driving, drive. You know, if you're eating, eat. If you're standing, stand. If you're walking, walk. But often we're somewhere else. You know, we're thinking about something else. We're not paying attention. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, I think a lot of people in jail who may have committed heinous crimes who have no memory of it, they weren't even in their body. Something else took over. That's sad when you think about it. And you just made me think about when I lived in the haunted house, you know, I'm I'm sober for over four years now, no alcohol at all, no weed. But when I lived in the haunted house, I drank a lot. And I know for a fact that it made me more fearful. And I know I kept making it worse and worse and worse because that energy of fear attracts the more negative stuff. And yeah. then, oh, what was I going to say about that too? Oh, there was a, you just made me think of this one night where I got blackout drunk and we smoked weed with it and i remember the next morning feeling my body and i didn't remember shit but the next morning i felt my body come back and i felt my spirit come back into my body the next mm -hmm. like it was like whoo, like i was like i was that, that was the weirdest thing ever i never experienced that but i have to think that's what like somebody took my body for a joy ride i don't know <laughs> something weird happened that night yeah, yeah, that does happen. I didn't remember. You know, uh, to counteract that, we also have very uh, protective guides. You know, our loved ones on the other side, they're watching over us. Uh, and, and a lot of times people do find themselves in difficult situations where they're stranded on the side of the road or, uh, you know, something like that where they could be in harm's way. And so uh, it's always important to call on our angels or loved ones on the other side to protect us and watch over us. But I think that that's happening all the time, even, you know, even if you don't ask for it. I, you know, we've got guides that are watching over us, protecting us. And, yes. you know, I believe in in the presence of spirit. And, and I know when I do a lot of my psychic work, including mediumship, I just recently did a stage mediumship show last Friday here in St. Pete. And when I'm doing uh, psychic work in front of a, a group, often I'm channeling. And I know I'm channeling because uh, a lot of times if I'll see somebody in the uh, in the audience or if they come up to me afterwards, and th this could be somebody I know quite well, and I don't recognize them, that means that I'm one of my spirit guides is still, uh, you know, 
taken over in a way and, uh, you know, doing the psychic readings for me. Uh, and then I kind of come back in, you know, so that's, that's kind of a situation where I, I think we're always channeling. Yeah. Mary Beth. I think people channel. And I think one of the things that's really uh, another thing you could pay attention to is the whole concept of the Freudian slip. And you just had one earlier in this uh, episode when you said maggot instead of magnet. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a Freudian slip. So I have an example of a Freudian slip. So I was uh, at a bar downtown and a couple of friends that I knew came and sat down and we just started a conversation. And one of them said that they were going in for surgery the next week and they knew I was a psychic and they, asked me what I thought. And, you know, I wasn't really in psychic mode, but I meant to say, well, I see you laid up, uh, you know, from the surgery recovering. But the word that came out of my mouth was, I said, I see you laid out. Laid out. I see you laid out. He died. Shut up. The next week he died during his surgery. Oh he God. was laid out. Wow. But, you know, I didn't mean to say that. But spirit speaks. Blocks of thought. Right. That's how I get it. Like, so like I get just blocks of thought that I could tell the difference. Like, so when I was younger, I couldn't, but now I'm able to discern like, okay, that wasn't me. That wasn't from my own brain. It was put in my head. I do that too. And that's when you can discern that you're receiving psychic information. It's just there. I mean, it, it isn't derived from thinking. Mm -hmm. It's not from you connecting the dots and surmising something it's just there you know where uh, uh it, usually when you're quieting your mind when you're out in nature when that's when you're able to receive that and if you're high vibing it's going to be really good information if you're low vibing don't follow those blocks of thought <laughs> well there's some truth to that absolutely um and and there are also it, what makes it really complicated is there is a low vibe level of spirit guide and they're called imposter spirits. So they're going to be giving you bad advice mm -hmm. because they like to tease people, taunt people. They're, they're just simply undeveloped souls. They're dead. They're on the astral plane. It's their and, entertainment. And, and they're having fun by messing with people, you know, so they're going to be giving you information that isn't true. And you have to be able to, surmise or discern whether you're uh, receiving that level of information or whether you're receiving high level psychic information and uh, the psychic information can come in at any time I was I was I was talking to somebody I was having a conversation a deep conversation all of a sudden I started getting pictures in my head about a bad a relationship that had gone bad and then uh, they gave me the name Tom and then uh, Tom said that uh, the person I was talking to had taken a stand uh, about Tom. And, and so I, I said, hey, I'm getting psychic information. It's coming from Tom. Uh, he's saying that uh, he had a relationship with you and you took a stand. And he says, well, Tom's my ex and we broke up over his drinking. I took a stand. I said I would not put up with that anymore. And it caused their breakup. And he came in at that time, you know, I wasn't looking for it. It just plain happened to say that he regretted having, uh, you know, uh, uh, he regretted uh, 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 sacrificing that relationship for the drinking. Interesting. Yeah. You know, so it comes in. Now, listen, I'm a psychic, so I can recognize that when it happens, but it happens to everybody. Yes. All of us get information, but, you know, or we see things, you know, sometimes psychic information will come through so fast that you're almost shocked by what you're seeing. And, and then your rational mind is starting to kick in and say, well, that doesn't make sense, but it's because it's psychic information and, and, and it just arrived and it's given you symbols, what's pictures, happen. right. But you don't have that, you know, kind of the thinking process to rely on, which we tend to rely on uh, uh, daily, day, day by day, all day long. And, uh, you know, that happened once when I was doing a reading for somebody who lived in Turin, Italy, and I, I just saw these massive floods. But in my mind, 
I knew Turin was in the mountains in northern Italy, and I thought, well, how could the mountains flood? You know, that's what my logical mind was saying. But what ended up happening within the next couple of months is they had major flooding in that part of Italy. So that prediction came true. And, you know, I saw that also like when the Ohio River would flood, you know, it's like I'd see flooding. And and once I was sitting there, I was uh, at a lecture and I looked over uh, to some people that were sitting a few tables down and I and I saw this man, man's hand, his hand was on the table and I saw where the fingers were gone they had they they were not on his hand and i shook my head and i looked again and his fingers were there you know so i knew that that was kind of a like a psychic flash or psychic information and what ended up happening because i knew him we had friends in common we weren't close friends i didn't really know him personally but i knew of him i found out that a couple weeks later he had his fingers cut off in a shop accident Holy crap. So, you know, I was kind of getting like this really shocking vision in my mind, but it ended up being psychic information. So when you're when you're getting a reading from a psychic, they need to be able to get psychic information because that's where you get the good stuff. You know, if they're if someone's just reading, uh, giving you a tarot reading and they're just doing it on by the book right uh, information that's that's not really reading i mean it kind of is but it's not on the level of a genuine psychic reading because when you're doing a genuine psychic reading and if you're using tarot the tarot simply becomes the vehicle for your intuition to appear in your mind you know for example i've got some tarot cards right here i i work with tarot cards and uh, you can you can work with the images, but sometimes you'll notice different things. You know, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, give you an example of that. Okay, like, so can you do like a? Can this be? And maybe you can't. Like, can it do like a collective consciousness reading for the viewers who will see this? We can. Can we set that intention? Is that a thing? Well, you know what? That is a thing. And, you know, your intention is a very powerful thing. You know, you could have an intention to have a great day and that energy goes forward into time and it helps set up that great day. So it, intending or intention, it's a super superpower. We all have that. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, you could be uh, going to meet somebody and you're intending to find a parking spot. You just put that out there. I intend to find a spot close to the restaurant. And, and, you know, it, it works, you know, the universe cooperates. Yeah. The universe is kind of like a field of consciousness and it hears you. It feels that you can interact with it just like your son did when he was calling forth the 13 angels or the 24 angels, you know, it's almost like this living thing that we're living in. We're a part of it. It's a part of us. And it, it, it we're in, imbued with spirit. And it will feel all the energy we, we put out. I mean, we're all connected by the electromagnetic field, right? Like Wayne Dyer would talk about the, the, the power of intention is what I'm, you're making me think of. The power of intention works because of the field. Because of the exactly. energetic and, and, field. And it's a field of consciousness that is not in a three-dimensional um, uh, world. It, it, so uh, you, uh, I could read somebody who is on the other side of the planet. You know, it's because the, the spirit world is not in 3D. It's, it's more of a hologram. It's almost like everything is there all at once. And you the way dead people travel, the way we travel when we're out of the body is we don't have to walk. We don't have to drive. All we have to do is think of where we want to go or who we want to visit. And bam, we're there. We're there instantaneously. You know, so, uh, you know, if you uh, have people who died and you move to another house or another town, they're not they're going to be able to find you because all they have right. to do is think about you they're not looking up your address you know that's not how they're getting to you they're getting to you because they think of you and they could tell when you're thinking about them when 
you talk to them, they can hear you. They're getting the information. So, you know, that that relationship continues, but it's a lot easier. You could just visit mom just by thinking about her and she's right, right there. But you're you know? saying we don't have to go to the graveyard. We can just, she's not at the graveyard. My mom's not there. And by the way, you brought my mom through um, and the audience, we were doing um, a cat rescue thing in uh, Sharonville and it was you and your uh, a partner, Chad. Right. That's right. Yeah. And um, I showed up with my friend Joan and, and her, her friends were there. And out of all those people, you were giving someone a reading and my mom, you're like, I have this lady. You're like, ja ja who knows Janice? Janice kept yelling. She kept yelling her name. Janice, Janice, Janice. No one else claimed her. And you said she was a little woman who died of cancer recently somebody's mom janice and i'm like that was i mean unmistakably my mom my mom and yeah. so that was like no one else you were the first one to bring her through because she died two years ago christmas day and i had been trying to connect and she like screamed at you <laughs> she made sure that she had that reading and and then I'm going to let you do this tarot thing. And later on, I want to tell that other cool story about the, the downtown Cincinnati library where you were so accurate about that. Or should, oh I, no. should I tell it now? Yeah, go ahead and tell it now. And okay. by the way, I'm ready to do the tarot reading. Well, let's do the tarot thing first. You want to do the tarot reading first? Okay, so uh, what I do is I do like a six card uh, reading, five or six cards. It's five five cards with a bonus card. So it's six cards. Okay, so uh, really, uh, if I'm going to interpret these cards uh, collectively, as, as in a reading for the world, maybe for 2024. Uh, Ooh, you know, I, I like think, that. I think that what the tarot cards are indicating is that economically, uh, we're moving into a, um, a better time financially. Oh, and I, so I feel that financially things will be a lot better. And I also feel as if people are going to appreciate the value of money more because, you know, we're, we've been in this time of inflation where everything is so expensive. And, you know, I, I notice that every time I go out or go to the store, it's like uh, everything is so expensive. So I think that we're learning the value of money. I think that we're learning to appreciate money and we're also learning how vulnerable the financial economic system uh, is. But these cards show that we're starting a whole new wave where in some unexpected way, the world economy is going to end up getting a lot stronger. And uh, also these cards are also indicating that the major drivers of the economy are going to probably be new, you know? So there's been... A lot of uh, the big tech companies have really driven the economy, you know, the FANG stocks, you know, Facebook, Apple, et cetera, Google, you know, uh, uh, have driven the economy. This, to me, is showing that there are going to be new drivers in the economy, but the economy is going to be a lot better. Uh, there's also uh, in these cards a uh, healing from heartache or heartbreak. And so I think that this is referring to the COVID years, uh, which um, started in 2020. And uh, I, I, I suppose we're, that might still be at the very tail end of the COVID years. I think people are still getting a little bit of COVID. Uh, but the main uh, pandemic years are over. So the cards are paying a nod to the end of that really difficult time that we've been through through COVID, not only through isolation, you know, where many people did isolate, not everybody, but many, and some people lost loved ones to COVID. Uh, I feel like we're really healing from that. I feel like uh, that is... Um, really uh, uh, another favorable uh, reading in this card that, that people are getting past that. We're, we're starting a new chapter, a new page. Now, there is something here uh, that uh, has to do with uh, overindulging, you know? So I still feel as if uh, there might be some problems with collectively in the world uh, 
with addiction, with drugs, uh, with alcohol abuse, uh, you know, various forms of addiction. I'll tell you, if you're human, you're subject to addiction. I mean, that's just the way our brains are. You know, we want to feel good. We want more things that make us feel good. But hopefully we can become addicted to healthy things such as working out, hanging out with our friends, maybe traveling, hiking, you know, positive things that are really good for us rather than uh, drugs uh, or alcohol. Uh, but these cards show that there's still going to be a, a, a problem with, with uh, drugs and alcohol in society. And I'm almost feeling like there might be like a new type of drug coming onto the streets, you know, something that might be one of those... Uh, uh, what do they call those designer drugs or a new form of drug you know they're always thinking about cooking up something new for people to get addicted to but a lot of that is done on purpose you know i think uh, there's a lot of manipulation going on globally where you know a lot of enemies of the u.s are sending uh very harmful drugs uh into this country to to create problems for us a but lot of overall, enemies in the u.s <laughs> Also. Right. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. But the main thing I'm getting out of this reading is that this is the dawn of a new day economically. So uh, I do not believe that uh, we're, we're, I believe we're out of the, 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 the danger of a depression or a regress, uh, a recession. I think oh, we're great. moving past that. And the economy, I think is going to be quite strong this coming year. So this would be a great time to get in the stock market, to invest money. Um, may, uh, I, I see people making a lot of money this nice. coming year. All right. That's that's very promising. Is, that, is, there, is there any more cards or that was the... That's it. Okay, perfect. I just didn't want to interrupt you. Um, so the story that I wanted to tell about your amazing accuracy, which I was like unbeknownst to me, I'm at... Well, I, well, we went on purpose. We knew you were going to be at the downtown Cincinnati library. Me and an ex-boyfriend were there. Mm -hmm. And um, you had, I got picked. I think I get picked all the time because I'm so open, you know. <laughs> and so I got a reading, but I did not know. And this is like a good thing to bring up because I call it, well, this time it was an amnesia, but a lot of people do get like amnesia when they're getting a reading and then they're yeah. like, no, you're wrong, you're wrong. And the next day, like, oh my God, that, this ha that has happened to me. But this time I literally did not know what you were talking about. What you said to me, well, my friend Jim came through who had died um, on he his airplane, like crash blew up his personal airplane. And he visits me all the time. So I wasn't surprised that it was him. You described him to the T. And then you said he's holding babies like twins twin babies and and rocking them and i was like well that's weird and my ex stands up and he's like well i had a vasectomy so that can't be you know and everybody laughed and but the bottom line is you just insisted there's twins coming into your life in some way there's twins and i was like okay so i actually told my friend kendra that night i was like oh because she was trying to get pregnant i was like oh you might be having twins okay long story short <laughs> she got really <laughs> excited but then the next morning my ex-boyfriend ends up going to Starbucks near me and sees my mom, who was still alive at the time, and her husband, Clark, just by coincidence, never have seen them there before. And and Clark was super happy. My stepdad was super happy because his uh, daughter, Abby, just had twin boys that Very morning. Good. Yeah. Uh, that or that morning, night or that, that night morning. either that night or yeah no this was the very next morning so yeah. listen before you're like how could you not think of that well clark and my mom got married later in life and he has so many kids i think eight and then so many grandkids and they are scattered across the country i don't i never even met them all so i did not know she was pregnant and i did not know she was having twins so that is why i was like victor got it wrong this time <laughs> but <laughs> but you did it. You were spot on. Or I, I didn't really think that. I thought maybe my friend Kendra was going to get pregnant with twins is what I was kind exactly. of hoping. Yeah. yeah so it, it tends to happen. The predictions tend to come true kind of in a way that you you may not be expecting. You know, oh. it's going to come true, but it'll uh, maybe not the way you're thinking. But that's so interesting that uh, I gave you that reading and hours a day or two later these less twins than a are day born 
And then your your dead pilot friend had them with them and they were ready for delivery. I got full body goosebumps just now. Yeah, because spirit works together like that. That's what I want people to know. Like it's all connected. Everybody, yeah, they, they know what's going on. They're with us still. They never gone away. And you know, I think I think there's nothing more healing than seeing a psychic medium if you have a loss of a loved one that's oh, that, is, that is so true uh, you know that's actually becoming a um i love it when mysticism and uh like science come together over oh, time yes. and so there's this new form of grief therapy that involves mediumship and it's they have scientists are finding that it's extremely effective for helping people turn the page on grief. Uh, when you have uh, an interaction where your loved ones are coming through, you, you, it can bring closure, you can feel the love, you realize that they're alive, you know, they're, they're just on the other side. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's it, I see it all the time where it changes people's lives. It's a very effective form of therapy. So, you know, when I when I do this work, uh, Mary Beth, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sincere. I always try to do the very best job I possibly can. Of course, uh, uh, there are people in this field, as there are in any field, who may not uh, be quite as ethical as I am. Or I was just going to bring that up. Like, what do you have, tell skeptics? Because, like, there are a lot of fakes out there who are just out for your money and then you have someone who might have potentially been a believer but then they got scammed what do we tell them exactly and unfortunately that 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 is some people's experiences but you know just like uh there are you know good lawyers bad lawyers good doctors bad doctors there are good sure. psychic bad psychics and there are some psychics who are unbelievably great i mean yeah. so talented you know so so fantastic but you know one thing i love about being a psychic uh mary beth is the work is a surprise to me i don't know what's going to happen you know i don't know who's going to come through i don't know what they're going to say so it gives me this spontaneity which really makes it very adventurous and very very fun for me and you know sometimes i don't know you know who's given me the message but i just did a reading for somebody who's a regular uh, customer and during the reading she uh, a spirit in the spirit world just said uh, make sure you wear your seat belts and then uh, I had also warned her about a business partnership that she was getting into. I warned her about uh, the character of the gentleman that she was getting uh, into this relationship with. I said, I don't trust him. Mm -hmm. So what ended up happening, uh, uh, like within days of the that message of being delivered is her son had just gotten his driver's license. He's 16. And so she let him go to the store uh, and run an errand uh, on his own in her car. And he ended up getting into a bad car accident. But luckily, he had a seatbelt on and there was no injury. You know, so the the, the warning about the seatbelt, you know, it came to pass, yeah. but everything was fine. But if she were in the car, she, the car got T-boned. If she was a passenger, it would have hit her because it hit that side of the car instead oh, of the car side. And luckily, she wasn't in the car. So, you know, that worked out just fine, you know, but still, the car accident did happen. And that business person I warned her about ended up, uh, you know, being dishonest and she had to break up that entire partnership. And uh, it's it's just amazing what happens. You know, when I'm doing readings or when I'm doing public mediumship, I don't really think it's really me doing the work. I, I feel like I'm just a vehicle or like a telephone, a vehicle for spirit to do the work. You know, right. so spirit's doing the work for me. I'm just uh, basically transmitting, you know, what they're communicating to me to the audience. And I consider that such a privilege and it, it's really such an interesting experience, the things that can happen. Um, I, I, during my mediumship thing last Friday here at the um, a theater here in St. Pete, there was uh, 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 an Air Force, uh, somebody who was in the Air Force coming through uh, from the spirit world. And I 
I described this guy, you know, I said he had blonde hair, he looked like a movie star, so good looking, and nobody raised their hand. And then, you know, I knew that person was out there. And so after the show, this this gentleman that was in the audience comes up to me and he shows me on his phone the picture of his uncle who's in the Air Force, blonde hair, movie star, good looks. It was the man coming through. And I said, well, why didn't you raise your hand so you could get the message? I said, oh, I was just too shy to raise my hand. But, you know, oh, that's when, a bummer. When, when you're too shy to raise your hand, when the spirits are there and you say, hey, I'm busy or uh, I'm too shy, you're not going to get that message, you know. So uh, that spirit was definitely trying to come through. And I hope next time that happens for this particular uh, gentleman, he does raise his hand. But, you know, it was... It was, uh, I called the event Holiday Messages from Spirit. And I was hoping for some holiday messages, you know, from the spirit world, kind of maybe Christmas memories or things like that. And there was a fireman that came through uh, from the spirit world. And he was telling me that he was with a lot of other firemen on the other side. They were all together celebrating the holidays uh, with champagne. And uh, somebody raised her hand in the audience, and it was her uh, dad, who was a fireman in New York City during 9-11. He and 340-some firemen lost their lives that day. I saw them all together, all happy. And the memory that he brought through for his daughter was um, of, of the lighting of the Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center in New York City. So and and she did say, yeah, we had we did that one year. We went to see the the tree lighting uh, in in at Rockefeller Center. So it was a wonderful, you know, loving Christmas memory from her dad, who's very very happy. And then uh, I also got a grandmother and grandfather that came through for somebody. He was there on a date. I don't even think he knew he was going to this a mediumship event. But his grandparents stole the show. They talked to him for at least a half hour during the whole first half of the show and she loved Christmas. So there were all these Christmas memories. I mean, dozens of, of clues that she was telling us about and he could relate to every single one. And then she started talking about Easter and, and an Easter tree and how she loved Easter. And, and this, uh, this man in the audience says, Oh my God, yeah, we even had an Easter tree. And, uh, made I've never Easter heard of this. an Easter tree. I know. I, I, I you, you can't know, make that stuff up. I know. And you, you, you see it sometimes in people's yards that really put really? Easter eggs in the tree, but you know. Not, oh, okay. Not oh, in the house, enough. you know. So usually, don't people don't have an Easter tree? But he got such a wonderful Christmas visit from his grandparents, and it was very moving for him. I mean, he was very moved. So I think that that those messages were the uh, will probably end up being his best Christmas present this year. Absolutely. There's nothing. I mean, it's it's invaluable. It really is how much connecting with someone who you thought maybe if you were skeptic, you thought that they were just gone. And then you're like, you, once that happens, and I brought a friend to the expo this past one where I saw you um, and he didn't believe in anything. And he, you were booked. I wanted him to see you, but you were booked. I scheduled ahead. Cause I know yeah. how, I know how popular you are. So I scheduled ahead, but, um, I had him talk to this woman, Polly. I don't, I know you used to I run it. Do you know Polly? I know Polly. Yeah. I can't think of her last name. It's sort of the big Berkheimer or something Berkheimer. like that. It's Polly Berkheimer. I can't yeah. believe I remember that, but she mm -hmm. was just like, as soon as he sits down, um, this is a non-believer. She's like, okay, well, your dad, Tom's here. And he says, you know, he's really proud of you and your siblings for taking over the business and how well you're doing with it he knows about your mom's car wreck last week just just so you know everything's gonna be fine she's not going anywhere anytime soon you know and just all of these very very specific things and uh he it was only 15 minutes you know her she's fast she's like Brrr. it only yeah. needs to be 15 minutes you're like holy crap she just like <laughs> I, 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 I had a reading from her and it, that's exactly what it was like. She had the names, she had the messages, bam, crazy. bam, bam, you're getting a lot of information very, very quickly. Very matter of fact. And I bet your friend that was oh, he's a believer now. probably a life-changing experience for him, wasn't it? 100%. Now he wants to have a psychic party. So I wish you were here in Cincinnati still. You moved to Florida on me. But if you were, if, if you were here, because he's like, I want to have a psychic party. So I was thinking of, you know, the people that I could 
because I'm going to help yeah, them. And I'll be up there in April because I'm up in Cincinnati a lot. Oh, so, we could yeah, probably I arrange lived, it. I lived in Cincinnati for, um, oh, 40 years, over 40 years. So, you know, that's my that's my hometown. You know, it, it, Cincinnati gave me everything. And, you know, for being a conservative Midwestern city, I never got any flack about really? the psychic. Uh, you know, when I was... Uh, uh, Psychic Thursdays on Q102, which is one of the top stations, yeah. uh, radio stations, top 40 station. Oh, I, was, I found you. Yeah. yeah, And and I was uh, official psychic for Fox 19 in the morning. You know, so I, I was always on Fox 19 and, and, and several other radio uh, stations after that. And I never got any flack for being psychic. Uh, Cincinnati was so supportive of me. And then I started doing the expos and the expos became huge. Uh, you know, they, the, the Victory of Light Expo became Cincinnati's 13th largest convention yeah. based on annual attendance. And I actually started getting protesters at the expo. I'd get these what? religious people. I didn't uh, know that. This, and it, it, <laughs> but but I, was, were, I was always they there. So, it was so outlandish that people would just kind of laugh at them. You know, they'd wear, they, they'd wear, uh, they'd carry signs or wear shirts that would say things like, ask me why you're going to hell, you oh, know, with names. That's lovely. And so I had uh, a really renowned author uh, come into the expo and he had to drive by the protesters. And he said to me, he says, Victor, you know you've made it when you have protesters. It's true. You got <laughs> protesters, haters, like, you know. And then they ended up. They're, they're advertising for you, really. They are. But, you know, it was so cute because it just brought all the people in the expo closer together because uh, people driving in would give them the middle finger or, you know, just kind of invite them in so they could real they could see that there's yeah. nothing to be afraid of. and. Actually, some of the protesters actually made it into the expo and they looked around and, you know, all they saw was love and light. It's just fear. You know, there's nothing I love more than flipping people, though, like that happened with my friend David that I just told you about. We're non-believer. I love believer. that, too. But I do I respect it. I respect everybody has their journey. Not everyone has to believe what I believe, but there, it is so fun when when someone's a non-believer and I, you get the opportunity to do that constantly. It's magical. You know, talking about um, non-believers, my, my dad was a man who went to church every Sunday. But one day we had a conversation and he said, Victor, I don't believe in life after death. I, I feel like after I die, I'm just going to be ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I will cease to exist. And uh, this is a church going guy. And, you know, you know, I don't know how he kind of reconciled those yeah. two. But a few years after he died, it was the night before his birthday. His birthday was March 15th. So I am I'm in my kitchen in Cincinnati in my house. And he shows up right there in my kitchen in spirit. And I'm looking at my dad and the look of love and pride on his face, like just kind of beaming. And, you know, I could tell that he was with all his friends in heaven. And wow. this was kind of his chance to kind of show me off. Yeah, that's that's my son. That's my oldest son. I was I was their first kid. And, you know, he has shown up for my two sisters when they've had mediumship readings. He's come through so loud and clear. And one day my sister asked the medium to ask my dad why he uh, has never come through before. And and he told the medium that he didn't know this was possible while he was alive. He didn't believe in psychics. He even told me that. He said, you know, Victor, I just really don't believe in psychics. And he knew you were psychic at this time. And he knew I was a psychic. You well, know, you got to say when he shows up at your house, and told you so, told out. you so. Yeah, and then the reason he uh, didn't believe it is because he just didn't really know it was possible. And now that he knows it's possible, now that he's dead, he comes through almost every time uh, my sisters and I are getting a reading. And it's unmistakably him and we've gotten such a such a kick out of my dad's great sense of humor when he shows through uh it's so funny chad siebert who i did that yeah. like, cat charity event is he a, gave i got i got picked by him last time the last time you were there the yes yes you did so you know uh, i get picked all the time was getting a, a reading and my dad came through and chad was the medium and chad started laughing and he says oh my god i'm getting a scene from the price is right 
you know, that game show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's saying, come on down. And, you know, that was my dad's favorite show. I mean, he, he would watch that every day. So the fact that he came through as if he were the host on uh, on The Price is Right, uh, my sisters and I still laugh about that. because Garrett that, has a sense of humor. That is so my dad. It's It was just, it was just a wonderful experience for all of us to reconnect to dad and feel his presence as a, as a living presence. Not We're not wondering. We know he's around us. And it's a good feeling. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. And I hope that anyone watching this, any of my viewers, you guys, Victor is amazing. Even though he lives in Florida and I'm in Cincinnati, we could do remote. You can do remote. Do you do Zoom? I do Zoom, Face FaceTime. Uh, I, I could do a phone, read, phone, you know, so yeah, you know, and in person, if you're in, in Tampa Bay or when I'm visiting Cincinnati and I always visit Cincinnati in the fall, at least a couple times. And then also during the month of April. Well, this is going to be on YouTube. So I'm thinking even if someone's in another country and, and they speak English, do you do WhatsApp? Can they do that? WhatsApp? I've done what I did. What's WhatsApp when I was uh, in, doing it uh, in India, because that's how everybody communicates in yeah. India. I'm not normally on WhatsApp, but we could do WhatsApp. Yeah, you, okay. I've got the app on my phone. And I'm going to put all of the ways for people to reach you in the description box. And or if you're, depending on what platform you're watching, I will have it somewhere so you could reach Victor directly because you definitely want to have an experience with Victor. Uh, his prices are very reasonable. Uh, I have a lot of experience with psychic mediums, and he's definitely um, reasonable. So for his area, for his level of expertise, he's unbelievable. So also, I'm thinking too, since we ran out of time, maybe next time, you know, what, I'm getting more and more subscribers by the day. I would love to do a live sometime if you're down with it, and we could have like people ask questions um, directly. Would that be something you're you're open to? Mary Beth, I love doing group readings on Zoom. Uh, you know, uh, during COVID, I did a, uh, a, a wellness retreat for Children's Hospital, and it was all done over Zoom because uh, COVID had kind of resurged. So they made it a virtual event. And the people who got the readings with the spirits coming through, it was so profound. It was so moving. Uh, the the stories that came through and everybody could relate the to. People so, are crying and <laughs> even if you don't get a reading personally, the stories that you hear uh, are so moving and so entertaining. There was a a dead baby uh, who came through uh, and uh, made contact with uh, the baby was a little boy uh, who made contact with his nurse at Children's Hospital. No, it was a different hospital and said that he was a dead baby and showed me an image of that nurse holding him the way a mother holds a little baby. And the nurse said, uh, and the baby said, um, this was five years ago. So she said, that was my very first job as a nurse was caring for dying children at the hospital. And no one had ever picked that baby up except me that wow. one day and I held him while he was still alive and then he died. And so he came back to thank her for that hug, for that love, for that that moment of tenderness uh, and, and, and gratitude. Gratitude and how meaningful that was because you know a lot of people in that line of work they don't realize how profoundly they're in, impacting those little souls that might only live hours or days, you know, those impressions last them all, uh, you know forever and it was so cute that he came back and thanked her for loving him uh, uh before he died it was it was very moving very very special you probably don't remember this because i know it's like a whirlwind for you at the expo but the very last time when you and chad were up there and chad actually a baby girl came through and it was a lady right behind me. And we were all it crying. Was he was crying. Oh, was that you? Actually, actually, I'm the one that brought her forth. Okay. Well, and then yeah, so, Chad, so that Chad was, was crying. So was, that was, was maybe lady, somebody else. There was a lady right behind you. Yes. And uh, there was a little girl that, who died as a girl coming through. And that That's was her daughter. Mm -hmm. And then the daughter said that when she died and went to heaven, she <gasps> went to a little boy whose name was Chris. Chris. I remember Chris was the name too. And she goes, that's yeah. my living, that's my living son. She said, that's the son I had 
after she died. So crazy. And so you know what the way parents think is they're thinking, God, I wish that Chris had known his little sister. And this was her way of saying that they did know each other. They spent time together in heaven as brother and sister after she died and before he was born. And, you know, that's a teaching story, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it I have full the... body goosebumps again because that was yeah. wild. Well, I don't know why I thought it was Chad, but I remember Chad was channeling somebody or he was connected with somebody. He couldn't stop crying. Like he was like really not crying, crying, but choked no, up. He was, he was emotional. You know, uh, when we do this work or, or when you're experiencing this work uh, and you start crying, all, it simply means that your soul is touched. You know, when our souls are touched, we have an emotional response. Mm -hmm. so, you know, when you're crying, it often indicates that your soul has been moved in some way. Right, right. Well, you know, um, with the with the next with the, the live one, what I was talking about was a YouTube live. I'm thinking about starting to do YouTube live. And that would be oh. would, like where people are typing in questions, I think. Um, yeah, so that's that's where this is going to be posted is on YouTube is the main place that people watch. But yeah, we'll figure something out. I definitely want to have you back on the show. And it has been a wonderful conversation. And I'm going to have, again, all of Victor's information. Do you have any events, anything you'd like to tell the viewers? Yeah, I do. You know, I, uh, Mary Beth, you, you probably know I, I did spiritual travel for many years, you know, doing spiritual travel to different places around the world. And I am back to doing spiritual travel this summer. I'm leading a tour to Machu Picchu in Peru. And that's going to take place July 17th through the 26th. And I'm going to be doing the psychic part of the tour where I'm going to feel the energies everywhere I go. And I'm going to teach people how to do psychometry, which is where you, you know, touch a building, touch an object and feel the energy. It's as if it comes alive. And uh, that tour, uh, if for information, go to mis MysteriousAdventuresTours.com. Mysterious, MysteriousAdventuresTours.com. I post everything I do, all my events on Facebook. So please find Victor Peruta on Facebook, uh, do a friend request or just uh, uh, follow me and you'll get all the information about all my events, my mediumship events, my, my the expos, my tours, my classes. Uh, so you can get it all on Facebook. Awesome. And I highly recommend a one-on-one -on -one session with Victor too, you guys. Like that's when you can really, you know, get straight to your people, straight to your people who are trying to talk to you. Like my mom did it, interrupting the other audience member. <laughs> I love that when they come through, don't you? Yes. I've Cause I was trying not to get my hopes up, you know, cause then you get disappointed, mm. but I was like, mom, please, please yeah. come through. And yeah. like I said, you were the first one she came through and now she comes through all the time. Isn't that amazing? That's you, great. You broke I, the seal. <laughs> that happens. I'm, I'm honored to do so. <laughs> she was so excited too. Well, Victor, it's been a pleasure talking to you. We'll say goodbye to the audience now. And thank you again for being such a wonderful guest. I learned so much today. I feel like I know a lot, you know, about uh, psychics and paranormal, but I, you actually taught me some things, you know, so I'm pretty impressed. You are so welcome, and you're a great interviewer. I enjoy being you. on the show so much, and I can't wait till our next next one, Mary Beth. I can't wait either. So, you guys, subscribe. We're gonna do this. We're gonna plan to do the YouTube live, and so join our community so you can be part of it, and you can ask Victor a question directly. So, thank you, everyone, for watching. We so appreciate you. Bye bye.